shipping team will take over the next 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Wait, after Pastor Lala, then I oh, said, team will take over. Should I wait for him to leave or should I say all of them together? All of them together, but I tell that they know he's coming. Okay. I formally open in prayer and then thereafter the worship team. Great is your grace among us, O oh God, this morning. Thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for the abundance of your mercy and your grace. The message I knew every morning, even this day, as you are walking out. You will come to embrace your goodness, your loving kindness, your faithfulness. We as we gather to this place, Lord, we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate the great wonders of your work in us. The great purposes that you accomplish because of the destiny for which we were born the destiny for which we are here today, for the mission that is left before us to accomplish and to fulfill in this time, O oh God, for we were born for such a time yes, as this, that in us the manifest glory of your presence and the splendor of your work might be fulfilled, O oh God, so that honor and glory should go to you. Father, as we are gathered in this place, we acknowledge your presence, Spirit of the living God. Yes, Lord. We acknowledge that you are here Perfect that which concerns us as individuals. Thank you, Being in this place, oh God, so that as we come to an end of this session, Lord, we may be renewed, rekindled, energized, oh God, and prepared to do more for you. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, my Father, for all this. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Lord, 
Lord Jesus. you Jesus we bless you Jesus we thank you Jesus we bless you Jesus we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus there is none like you Jehovah there is none like you King of glory there is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Lord, I worship. There is none like you, Jehovah, I bless you. There is no God like you, I love you. Faithful is your name, my God, I love you. You remain faithful, there is none like you. There is no God like you, you are God. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Jesus, the first and the last. I love you, Jesus. 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 I bless you, Jesus. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you.
you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah. We love you, Jesus. We praise your name. We praise. We praise your Say again, we praise, we praise your name. Tell him we praise him. We praise the Lord. Give him the honor, the glory. Say it as you mean it. I praise the Lord. I give him the honor. I worship Jesus. I'll forever bless the name of the Lord. I Jesus, <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I wash, <laughs> I bless your name. <laughs> I, I worship, I worship. <laughs> I love you. Faithful is your name. Glorious is your name. <laughs> Holy is your name. I bless you, Jesus. 
There will never be God like Jesus. Supreme and holy. Deserving of glory. There'll never be the king like King Jesus. Awesome and glorious. Your holy name. The creator of the seen and the unseen is worthy. Glorious and awesome is the name of the Lord. We praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Give him praise. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Can I just one minute? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. It's not working. I don't think the mic is working. Okay. Please give me one minute. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. <laughs> Can we clap hands for ourselves? <laughs> I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all. And may I say, you all look drop-dead gorgeous. Amen. May I say that uh, my name is Onkarabile, and it is my pleasure to be your MC this morning, along with my co-MC, Njabulo, wherever she is. We appreciate you taking the time of your schedule to join us today. We hope that you learn a lot from this event and from the contents of the book that will be discussed hereafter. That. With that said, there is a saying that if it is still in your mind, then you should take the risk. And that, it, that is what Dr. Bui Sandesi has done, for we are witnesses today of how a little seed can grow into a beautiful tree. So I ask that we make this morning not only wonderful, but also a day full of learning and new experiences. Okay. And for the first session of the program, I would like to welcome Pastor Little Jani to speak about the spirit journey. <coughs> Pastor Little Jani. Okay. He lifted me up from the deep eyes we play and planted my feet. On the king's highway, and this is a reason I sing and I shout. Oh, Jesus, came down. Bye. 
Hallelujah. the fivefold ministry, Bingelela Bonka Bantu Abafigilegulendao, a Kameneli, Lom Fertu Jesu Christo, Hallelujah. Um, Gizo Kulumango Hambo, Exeni Izwi, Engzo Kumela Pesguado, Tora Lagala, Engotinica, Genesis chapter twenty one, twelve, verse one to twenty. Uhambo Uhambo, Lu, Suga, Gwenin Dao, Uya Gwenin Dao, from the country to another country. The and is the movement from one place to another, from a country to a country. Uma uhambo, uhambo If you take a journey, you don't just take it without a purpose. Uta uhambo, lu, 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 the journey is a vision. The journey is a dream that you have in your life. And ipupo lelo onalo uba nalo is tembi so empiwe The dream that you have, you have it because there is a promise upon your life. And you kona nesbusi so. And there is a blessing. Uba hambe na pande we so. Because you cannot go without a blessing. Hallelujah. Izwi ligankulunkulu. Umasili funda strong to ukunukulu ena ukabo duake uye na owa enjongo yale yale luhambo enkulumanga alo. When we read the word of God, we find out that God Himself had the purpose in this journey I'm about to talk about. Unkulunkulu enwa tini Genesis chapter twelve verse one to twenty nzo kuma i verse lo kala liti unkulunkulu wati ku Abraham apuma ezweni lagini. Na says the church and his zako, na send Lini Gai so. He came out of his family, out of his country. Aguyona into a lula ushia in Dawiako. It is not an easy thing to leave your place. Aguyona into a lula ushia is sobo. It is not an easy thing to leave your family. Aguyona into a lula ushia in Suyagini. Kepa na gubagun jalo o Abraham agazanga kriya kriye. Even though it's like that, Abraham did not resist. O Abraham wa la lela unkulunkulu. Unkulunku Abraham wa metemba u Jehovah ngalo luhambo. And o Abraham wa mtobe la unkulunkulu ngalo luhambo. And Abraham 
humbled himself before God with this journey. Wapuma washia iharani. He left Haran. Let it is when Kulukulu, Kulukulu, what you go Abraham, Shia Gonke. The Bible says God spoke to Abraham and said, Leave everything. Kapa u Abraham, Neshua, Agazaka, Shia Gonke. Abraham unfortunately did not leave everything. Ewa Benguake, what Tata Ulot. In his journey, he took Lot. Wahamba Nai. And walked with him. And Ulot, Wanga Yona, in Nanya, ye planning and Kulunku. And Lot was not part of the plan of God's plan. Lot was not a person who was called. But it was Abraham who was called by God. In Jenning, Abraham from the land where he was to Canaan, in the journey was not easy. Even though he agreed to go, Naguba Echela Unkurunkulu Uba Magahambe. Though he was told by God to go. Even though he was blessed to take this journey, the journey was not easy. Even though he was blessed to take this journey, the journey was not easy. Let it is when Kulu Ehamba Gulia Unzela. The Bible says as he walked the journey, what Sangabe Zalane King and Zelen? Omasi Tata Uhambo. When we take the journey, who corner my potholes? There are many potholes on the road. Steep hills, steep hills, gravel road, gravel road, one way. Freeway, nama robot akona lapo. Hallelujah. And the uma uhamba gulenzela uma utola i one way. Au guaze guchiga ubuyele muva. Ngoba inzela ai gufumele utu ubuyele muva. Uma ushanga na ma steep hills. Inzela e nyuga. Au ye guhamba ngobi inzeli e nyuga. Uma ushanga na ne gravel road. Agunzim agunula uhamba guyona. Kepa au ye uhamba. We are kubega uhamba guleon zela. Lapo uhamba guleon zela. Kune zinto osang os funda gulen zela. His zinto as you walk high. Zonke less it osang as nazo. All these things that you come across. Agu shoot less of zinto. Kepa ziso guaka impilo yako. Ziso gufundisa. Uzobona ngelini li sobu ngaboni ngalo kala. Uma uhamba gule onjela guvuga ugwe saba. Liti izga nkuru kuru Abrahama ese hamba gule onjela. Wafiga ekipite. E hamba no ngake. Injela ungukake ewa emushe ngakona. Wafiga lo ugwe saba. Ngoba e saba izwe la se kipite. Ngoba lali nabantu ababi. Wafiga gule undawo. Wanga vumu kushutu nkoska zwake. Unkoska zwake. Watu utate wabo. Uma we saba. Uya kutuli nkulumo yako. Kepa loga kushukuta au hambe enzeleni. Uya kubega au hambe enzeleni. Enzeleni kukona kufuga. Ukwa shugana. Kufuga ushugana. Ngoba uhamba na bantu ungamele uhambe nabo. Liti izu ankurukuru wahamba no lota. Kepa enzeleni kwa fikis katu kuti basugane. Uma uhamba enzelaka jehova au zitati zintu ngkurukula nga shongu tu zitati. Ngoba lezo zinto zia kukubangela inkinga enzeleni. Problems for you on the road. As Abraham was going here to fight battles. Ngoba efuru kukulula u Lord endaweni ebeguyo ebanjiwe. Because he had to set free Lord wherever he was kept. Na noma ngabe umtanda kanjani umuntu. Even though how much you love a person. Na noma ngatanda kanjani ukamba na ye. No matter how much you would like to. Uba ege yona ingenyo yo hambo luako. Uzo sugada na ye. Hallelujah. Uma ehamba u Abraham enzeleni. As Abraham walked on this journey with the Lord. Wafiga e Canaan. He came to Canaan. Kuya manga lisa loku. It's surprising. Ukutu u Abraham ufige e Canaan. That Abraham got to Canaan. Kepa agani zanga izwe la se Canaan. But he never enjoyed the food. Ngoba unkulunkulu wambizele ukutimagaye e Canaan. 
Kepa why I'm busy lang to as a mupanelo lizwe. Kepa is the lady unkurukula and busy legulona. Lani begue in Zaloyake. Yona and the follow to eat the lady lizwe. Let it is Gankurukuru Maga figure a canani. What tola macanani as a sacoda will end down. Ama canana was zanga as soon as I figure yet. As cutting a sling, we are figuring down where do you sell figure? Kepa is the mozagule on down. As the world was out in Piloyako Ibelula, and the lady who figure in Zala. Let it is Gankurukuru Uma as a canan Ugu Abrahama. Gua figure in Zala. In Zala, I am Susa, I am Seki Peter. Oma ni funda le li lizwe. Sega ti u Abraham be hamba e chigere zenta wene yoto. Kepa be kunge njalo. Ngaba ukulukulu magere kuhambi se e kuchulisa. Let it is gan kulukulu wam nige zis tembi so. Enge le le ai hambi le ungeni le wapi de wapuma. Kwasini skati, kwasini skati ubona se ngati agwenzegi ngoba au shalanga kule ndao ufigile kapa isimo siya mkipa futi kule ndao. Kapa agu shuti logo, agu shuti logo wena awenzangu msebenzi. Lenzela u Abrahama yambile, eishia, enzeleni. Ya iboni sa inzelu mkuru kulu aplene ngayo lenzalo ambegele yona. Uma sifunda izla mkuru kulu abantua naba kwa Israeli ba pume ekadani ba shuswa inzala baya ekipite kepa abazane ba pelele ekipite ba pide ba pume ekipite ba buyela ekanani. The children of Israel did not end up in Egypt. They ended up going back to Canaan where God has promised that they will be. Because God is faithful. He does not do something that he does not finish. On the road, Abraham came across shortcuts. Easy road. Uma ungashali. Enda wenu kuyo. If you do not sit in the place where God is, if you do not wait, uzo tata ma shortcut. Let it is gan kulu kulu. O Abraham wa tati se lulego. The Bible says Abraham took an advice. Ngoba enzele ni kukuwa na nezi lulego. Wa tata is lulego eximla se ya Let it is gan kulu kulu. O o o o sara wa bona se ngati unkulu kulu ya dileya. Oh, hambe no abal hamba yo. Ngoba unkulu kulu watembi su Abraham kutu yomba ubaba wezizwe. Kepa uma epega is kati samba. Ngoba na se kati agwen zegi. Utata uhakaru umnigaza umyeni wake. Guvela indotana unge yona ye plani kan kulu kulu. Nge sinis kati senza izi nto si tata ma short cut. Bese si leta izi nto unge zona ama plani kan kulu kulu. Yebo Ishmael wa ye indotana ga Abraham kepa wa ye nge yona i plani kan kulu kulu. Yes, Ishmael was the son of Abraham but he was not in the plan. Kanti futi u Ishmael beganga yena umuntu ozo kwa ndisa inzalo ga Abraham. And Ishmael was not the person from whom the nations were going to be born. U Abraham abe unge yena obegele uguza izwe la sekanan. Ishmael was not the one who was supposed to eat the land of Canaan. Kepa nagubagu njalo ohambeni siya figa. Although it was like that, we do get to a point. Iskati esi raiti masasifigile. When the right time has come. Unkulu unkulu wazibona kali sago Abraham. God showed himself to Abraham. Ya figa indota na yestembiso. The son of promise. Ya figa indota na oyo guanda. The son of increase. The son of promise. The son was supposed to be the inherit the land came. Hallelujah. Amen. You can get to the end point. The journey does not end anywhere. Because God is faithful. Wafiga uisaka. Isaac was born. No Jagobe wafiga kanjalo. Jacob was also born. U Israeli wafiga walidla izwe. Hallelujah. Amen. Ngizogwenza the illustration. I have come to make an illustration.
menstruation. When a woman gets pregnant, conceiving, she conceived in the womb. When the, womb, when the child has been attached to the womb, she gets inside the placenta of a woman. Inside the placenta, there is water. This is where the baby is. During the first few weeks of pregnancy, she becomes a fetus. That does not mean that child stays inside the that person in hidden places. The place where the person gets to perform taking a certain shape. As he continues to take a certain shape, he needs to take and to breathe. He needs oxygen. He needs food. And that baby, how is he going to eat? And the umbilical cord connects the baby to the mother. Oma umtwana esebeletwa. When the child gets born, that umbilical cord is cut. umbilical cord. The cutting of the umbilical cord. Is the separation of the baby and the mother. When the baby has been separated from the mother, the umbilical cord is tied. The umbilical cord is tied. The tying of the umbilical cord. Stops the first process. Then there starts a new process. Then the child gets a new way of breathing. He begins to breathe in a different manner. When God creates us, when God calls us, when God takes us over, when God takes us out of us, when God takes us out when God separates us, when God puts us on the road, not just wake up in the morning, God starts by making sure God starts by giving you the let it um shaba wong in a simo. Gwa wuna pagati wa manzi. Kepa unkulukulu wa biza gonke. Wa kipa um shaba pagati wa manzi. Gwa wukona ama kuma gwona. Gwa wukona zintaba. Gwa shuma ishasha gwa puma gonke. Trees started to grow and everything came out. Ngani ngoba. Um shaba na noba wonga pansi wa manzi. Because even though the world was it does not mean that it was not complete. Now we're in Zelaya Kosoi's Hamba. Now no matter what you do, it's free. It's in a form. Even though it does not have a form, it does not mean that it's not complete. This journey is complete. But it needs to be more. This is why it is complete. This is why you take your form. This is where 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 you get your This is where you get your This is where you get your So that you can be This is where you are. You are This is where you get your 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 This is where you get Lapa bantu ba zobona nuko shulega wako. Lapa bantu ba zobona ni mpumele lo yako. Baba unkunukuru unkunukuru habisana ayo. Ubizo enkuru mangalo. 
Lolo or Lucalo, Jehovah, come on, like one that is started by God himself. Let's let now. Oh, yeah, let's let us all hamba you. Maybe you are losing hope on the road. Sambe, who pedal a man's Maybe you are losing your strength on the road. Sambe, who bought an insolent Zelen. Loco Abu shooting the lucky penin. And then Zella, I can't be And this is not starting with us. Lenzella Nabu Christus Jesu Yabanjalo. Even with Christ, it was like that. Oma Upuma Ushia Gonke. When you get out leaving everything, Little is Lankunkulu Ujesu Christo Naya Washi Zulu. The Bible says, even Jesus Christ left. Washia Ukosi. He left his kingship. Washia. He left the spiritual world. He came down into this world. And took the form of the world. He came into the womb of Virgin Mary. And became a total human being. 100%. He humbled. And stayed. In the womb of Mary. This is where he was born. This is where he took the form. He was born. He came across all of these things. He came across all of these things. Because there is no way that you will go and be. But he did not leave this room. Because he had a purpose. He had a dream. There was a vision. Oh, I'm letting you lend out. As a figure of Jesus Christ, when he had come, what came across all of this? He lived like us human beings. Oh, in his life, he had a dream. He was not accepted. 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 Bible says, he was hung on the cross. On the cross. Died there. That's the journey. He came to the cross. He did not end there dying on the cross. He came down and went down to Hades. He conquered death and Hades. After that, he was resurrected on the dead day. What was his purpose? What was his purpose? Was to save, to redeem, and to restore mankind. Now, we will humble humble. Even you in this journey, you are walking. In everything that you are coming across. In Jongo, Uti Gubekona, Abanya Bantu, Abasi Zagalai. The purpose is that there could be other people who would be helped. Oh, humble, Luako, Alun Zelanga, when I went to. The journey is not made for you alone. Kepa, oh, humble, Luenzu, Abanya Bantu. But your journey is also made for other people. Gungenze, Gutuena, Ungali, Zilola Lizwe. It might happen that you might not even inherit that. But it is important that you won't. Because there are people who are coming behind. When God says I'll make you a great nation. It did not end by saying I'll make you a great nation. But he said I will bless you. So that you can be a blessing. Your journey is a blessing to other people. This is the word. I had come to deliver today. Amen. 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 The journey that we walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Even though we walk in this journey, we don't get discouraged. We have a song that is from heaven to earth. It says he came from heaven to earth. Where is the masculine? To show us the way. From the earth. To the cross. He bore our sins. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Nawe igamalako lizo paranyi suti nzo wenda kuti igamalako laziwe. God says I'll make your name known. Uma uhamba kule nlela. If you walk in this journey. Igamalako lizo paranyi iswa. Your name shall be lifted up. Unga zikatazi nguhambo. Na noma lungaba nzima kanga ganani. Don't worry about the journey no matter how difficult it can be. And lolo hambo lungele futi lise. This journey is for you and it's good for you. And unkunukulu bonile utu kufanele. And God has seen that it fits you. And unkunukulu ya azikutu uzo ngoba gulona. And God knows that you will conquer. Kuya figwa. You can get and you will get. Kuya figwa. To the place where you see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The journey to the journey. I almost said amen. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but we're about to speak, of, um, sort of explain our perspective as to how we saw the coming of the book titled The Journey. So it was supposed to be myself and UKG had sort of recorded a video for us. Um, it was coming right, so I might play it a bit later on after um, I share my part. So with the, when did the journey start? <laughs> The journey, I would say, started, I think, even after the being ordained, I would say, from what I've observed. So that is like around 2014 or so. Although maybe she wasn't <coughs> consciously thinking about the book at the time. So occasion I remember 
was we were in UJ one day. KG would, he was also part of the UJ. One of the students, KG is a student, is Mama. So when we were at UJ, that means KG and all her other students were there. So we were at UJ one day, and then she was going through her past sermons. So we're sitting in the office, and she's busy going through her notebook, and she's passing page. She's like, you know, and these are actually quotes. I'm like, what are quotes? <laughs> and then she's like, no, every time I preach, there are these lines that I say, and I don't realize I'm saying it until I go back and digest it. And then, so like, she didn't know that it was quotes when she, when she writes it and says it, but afterwards, then she recognizes, you know, man, this was actually something. And I think even when she realized it's because she was told by someone, Nuguti, you know that line that you said. So it was those small things that sort of all contributed to her realizing, Nuguti, there's actually something here that we, can, that we can work from. So that was the one, I think I'd say, one process that was catalytic to the book, or where I saw, Nuguti, there was something coming. And then after that, every now and again, we're passing by kum books, kum books, kum books. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at references. So we all know those small notebooks you get from Kum books, whether it's like um, daily inspirational, those motivational books. And then she's like, I can just write like maybe 60 quotes and then zinganel. And I'm like, front to back quotes. That's a lot. <laughs> that was to me. So initially, the book was going to be just a book of quotes and daily inspirations. It wasn't supposed to be a book of... Um, there was no storyline, there was no, there was no, there wasn't a theme to a book. So it's just going to be a book of whatever quotes that come and then all of them compile them into one and then publish that. So that, that was pending for some time. There's a lot, there's a lot this woman does. So everything is on and off, you touch, you let go. <laughs> Amen. So, and then within that same period, she's like, Whenever I preach, I don't hear myself. So I want, so she started start recording her audio. So she started recording everything, then she'd listen to it. Then she's like, no man, someone needs to write this down for me so it, it can be given on to the next person. Because she, I think she realized the value in that which was being said and also how it was being received without her hearing it. So she might be saying it, but she doesn't hear it, but we receive it. Amen. amen. Sorry for saying amen. <laughs> It's not a preaching. So that's, that's, that's another thing that sort of led to um, another stream coming into the book. So now we first had the quotes, and now we have the sermons that are all that she feels need to be captured. So now, Palisa is now, but Palisa take these audio, start typing, and there's just a lot going on. Now Palisa is trying, it's not working, it's trying. KG, take these audios, start typing. KG is trying, it's not working. For some reason, there was always, it never, it didn't progress. So there was always the audios, and then they were passed on to someone, who didn't type it in. And it would, it, would, it would never sort of be tangible in the way that you'd want it to be. So it was a, it was a very ongoing process that was happening for the longest time. But then we didn't see it happening because it was every, every now and again she brings it up. It wasn't like I'm sitting down, I'm writing my book, I'm spending these few hours near bad. So it was drips and drabs of that. And then somewhere, hey! <laughs> At some point she starts writing. I think even on the day we were in the office, that same day she was now compiling. We were in the office for long now. I think she was just she was on the floor that day. She saw the idea and she ran with it same days on, on the spot. Now she's calling me, look, is this, is this template fine? I'm like, yeah, fine. Now she's reading me quotes. We're going back and forth. Does it make sense? Check the English. Yeah. So that day, I think she wrote like, I think it was about more than 60 quotes in that sitting that she just put onto her laptop. And then, like anything that she tries to do, every, every big project, like her PhD, something will be stolen. So the laptop broke. And then they broke in, they took the laptop, mm. now everything is gone. They took the laptop with the hard drives. Mm. So now it's all gone. Now we start again. So now we are discouraged. I wrote my quotes, they are gone. I asked people to write down my sermons, it's not moving. There's, there's, there's no progress in any direction of compiling this book. By the way, this is not the first book. This is not the first book she started with, even though it's the first book that is 
published or released. So there are many, many, many other books that she's, that are pending, that are halfway, or she's just afraid to release. But there's, there's more than one book, and this wasn't the first, but I think it's the one that she held on to the most. And then, um, by God's grace, we got other devices <laughs> to start typing and drafting again. Then the process started. This time, now she was working by herself, on herself, during hidden hours. So no one would see her write the book. Even as she asked me to give the remark of what was the journey of writing the book. I did not see, no one saw her write the book. So we only saw towards, I say maybe towards end of last year, when the laptop died again. <laughs> when that other laptop also died. Now she's asking to borrow our device. With the laptop, I need to do my corrections and take it back to the publisher. So there's a whole other thing. So when she got to close to the, I'll say three quarters of finishing the book, her laptop died. So everything, again, just switched off everything. But luckily, she had saved an edited version of it. So although she had lost La Bega Corner, but she had like, you know, so now she's not fully, fully like discouraged. At least she has half the work. <laughs> so now she must build on that half again. So then she kept going, she kept going. Um, I think she was working hard at it. Uh, it was towards the end of last year when she was also busy with her studies of school stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so during that process again, she's writing the book at night. And then when she takes a break from the book, she does her schoolwork. After a break from schoolwork, she comes back to, to the book again. So there's always a back and forth between the book and school and church and mother and work and all of it. So that's just a, a back and forth like that. And then she finally went to get the cover. So now if there's a cover, it means it's real. Ne? It's no longer like a thesis that has no cover page. It's now, now it's a book book. <laughs> now it's a book. So the first draft comes. Um, I don't think she has it with us here. Do you have it? OK, we'll show you later on the first, the first cover. I'm like, oh, OK, I see it. The picture, the pixels are a bit shaky, you know? <laughs> but you don't discourage, because it's her first book, and we've never seen it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we're happy, and we, we, she was very, very happy with it. And you could see it in her face. And then she went to another place. And then she got the cover that we have now, which I think is just beautiful, beautiful. And I would like to say that I'm so, so proud of you for seeing it through. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jaulo. It is honestly YouTube channel. <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> Beautiful words these are to see the the behind the scenes of how the book came to be. And it is such a beautiful book. And I've got to read a few words from the book and yeah, it is honestly quite beautiful. <laughs> Um, I would like to also welcome Mrs. Cindy Kakaza and Ms. Tendo Mrs. for, oh, Miss, sorry, Miss. <laughs> oh, we're still getting there. I'm putting it into perspective. Okay. For the review and interview of the book. So, who's first? No, no, we're together. Together, okay. You may come. Okay. Okay, so who, how do we, because they two. Um, it is an honor to be here and 
So have been chosen to do the big review? Yeah. I'd use this. Oh. oh, close to this, Nick? Yeah. You should be close to this. Just that. Okay. Okay, I decided to write down what I wanted to say because I have stage fright. And if I speak from the heart on the spot, I'll forget some of the points that I had. So there are many messages that God put forth in this book using the apostle. I truly believe that God was speaking to her while she was writing this book. And I'm grateful that she submitted to the voice of God because her obedience in this regard has given me hope and has strengthened my faith. This book has taught me multiple things, but I will dwell on a few that really stuck to me. When I first started reading this book, I was scared because I was thinking about my future and how we truly live our lives in the moment, not knowing what will happen next. But reading Dr. Sondesi's book has not only reminded me to trust in the Lord, but has given me so much comfort, reminding me that the word of God tells us that he is with us at all times. There is a light of hope that shines through this book that can only be the light of the one true living God. So much, so much light that I fell into worship after reading the first half of the book. What I love about this book is that it doesn't sell dreams or present a false hope, but reminds us of the reality that we will face obstacles in our lives. We will sometimes go through a route we did not anticipate, but we need not despair because there is light at the end of the tunnel for those who trust in the Lord. Another message that stuck with me is the message of worship, is the message of consistency. Consistency in pursuing God, consistency in prayer, consistency in intercession, worship, and being united. We should be more diligent in our pursuit of God than the enemy is in, a, in pursuit of our souls. The enemy is always fighting for his voice to be heard over the very author and creator of the words. Christianity is as much peace as it is war. The reality is that the enemy does not rest in pursuit of our souls and we should have the armor of God with us at all times and have our spiritual weapons ready. There is so... Thank you. That was the part where I was talking about war, but there's also so much peace in God for the man of faith. God promises to renew the strength of those who trust in him to fight our battles. We need only to trust in him under all circumstances. There is the world of beauty in being consistent in relation with God and everlasting joy. This is what God wants us to know about our wilderness. It's on page 115 of the book. They don't have the book yet. <laughs> oh, got it. Um, Dr. Sondesi says in her book on page 115, um, she was talking about the Israelites, and she says they had to, but then this applies to us as well. So it says they had to learn to trust him or they die. They had to unlearn the habits of Egypt trust him alone as they had to doubt their doubts. Wilderness revealed God's love and grace despite their weaknesses. It revealed God's supernatural provision and sustenance. They had to be taken the other way for him to further reveal himself to them. Thank you. Dr. Sondesi does not only exude so much humility and service, but also writes about it in this book and the importance of united efforts. She reminds us that to progress, we need to be humble before our God and have a willingness to serve those around us. I would also like to share a few points that Dr. Sondesi leaves at the end of her book as a word of encouragement. Yes. Which page is it? The last page. Yes. At the end of the book, um, Dr. Sondesi leaves a few concluding remarks that I will share with you guys. It says, when you finally get out of the bondage you've been in, trust God to lead you further. Do not trust yourself too much as you just went out. The enemy is still on your heels. Remove doubt and double-mindedness. God will not take you out of Egypt and kill you in the wilderness. Trust him. 
Although you are prepared for battle as you go out of bondage, the battle is still not yours. Depend on God and be obedient. Leave the bones of the past, lest they take your focus out from the Lord. Leave the past dead and buried and move on. Stop quoting and referring to it. Whatever happens, remember God is always with you day and night. God has made provision for you to keep moving, whether it is day or night, so keep moving. He continues to walk before you, just follow. I'm almost done. Limit your words as you move on. Some can hinder you and ensnare you, even kill you. Do not talk a lot. When you find yourself between the Red Sea and the troops of Pharaoh, don't despair. God has a plan to take you out. Don't speak against your Moses. You need him to lead you through and out of your wilderness. No matter how weak you think your Moses is, he was chosen for you for a reason. Do not grieve your Moses on the way. It is only fair that you all get to the promised land and enjoy life together. Confess well, Canaan is yours. So um, this book really spoke to me in a time of despair. And as I said before, I fell, and I'm being honest, I fell into worship. Like I was, I think I was, I had just reached page 58 of the book. I think that's the halfway line. I had just reached half of the book and I fell into worship and I even sent her a message on WhatsApp and I told her that her book really touched me and it really gave me hope and it strengthened my faith. And I am grateful to God to be here. I'm grateful to God that she, she adhered to the call of God and she allowed God to use her because as someone mentioned, I don't remember who, um, it's our journey is not just for ourselves, but it's for everyone else. So when she writes this book, it's not just for her, but it's for us as well. And it, it has helped me in that regard. And as she would say, blessings to you all. Thank you. <laughs> Don't give me this. <laughs> I won't let that <laughs> How do I talk? Just It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to say now. She has said most of the things. Um, but I'll just say a few things that I've actually uh, picked up. And also, um, to me, I'm not sure if Pastor Lezojane, 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 I'm a Zulu, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor Lezojane, uh, if she, um, she has read the book yet. Have you read the book yet? It seemed as if you were actually talking to us from the book. And at some point I was crying there because I was like, you are talking to me and I've read the book already. And um, sorry. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm gonna get strength from that crying. <laughs> okay, um, um, what really touched me um, from the book is mostly the quotes and to actually read about the journey that she has walked. Because um, I first met Dr. Sondezi um, 2015, actually 2013. Um, I first met Dr. Sunday in 2013. We were in this uh, conference um, in Gazulu Natal. Um, I was part of, um, I was a student at University of Zululand, and I saw this beautiful lady, and she was the flower amongst, um, I would say, the forest, because there are a lot of guys there. <laughs> so she was just the flower there. And then um, I remember I spoke to her. And then um, I don't know why I spoke to her and I don't remember what we spoke, but when I saw her again um, in 2015, 
now when I was in in, 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 in midst of the Western Cape, I was like, she is sent to me. And then when she spoke, like it was like she's saying, I'm talking to you, come to me, Michael. You know, when, when, when this book, when you read it, it's like, give me your attention, listen to me, listen to each and word that I'm telling you. And then the way she has described, I'm gonna be very honest with everyone here. I'm not a Bible reader, but then I've learned most of uh, the scriptures from the Bible from this book. And then it is being described in a very simplest way that even a kid from grade seven can actually understand this or any grade. So what actually touched me mostly in this book of which Anjabula just said is that how the book was actually started. The codes touched me a lot, the codes. Yet alone um, the story, her own journey um, of becoming um, uh, Dr. Apostle Sondesi. Um, I've, I've had so many hardships in my life. Um, I think when, where I was tested, where I actually saw that my journey is going to be a very long way and it's going to actually take a detour, as she has mentioned on the book, was when I was actually learning new things out of my life. Um, but what I'm grateful for is that she was part of my journey. Um, Pastor said that there are people um, that are being used by God um, to actually reveal uh, something to us, through us even. So she always says, you know, I've been through this hardship and you guys are blessed that you don't actually see this hardship because I saw it. And then the way I see her, I see the gold because the gold is built and, 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 and become, it becomes very pure through fire. She has been through fire. I don't want to mention what she's been through. Most of it is on the book and some, I think, on the other books that are coming that are being hidden on the shelves <laughs> in the house. So um, one thing that I've learned also from this book is that we, we actually um, tend to forget about our own journey and focus on the people around us as our family as well because we're trying to make them happy and forget that we also our own have our own purposes besides um, having to work a foot step, I mean, I mean um, to actually take footsteps with our own families, but we also have to take a journey on our own. So that's why she actually did, that's what she also says in this book, that she had to detach. That's what the pastor was saying. Sometimes you had to detach yourself with your family. You had to detach yourself with your ch children as well and try to find yourself and be strong for them. That's what she did. She became strong for, the, for her children. She became strong for, for her family. She became strong even for us before we even met her. So we're meeting her today. Some of you have met her a long time ago, and then she still touches us each and every day. I don't know, we were discussing about her when we were coming this side, me and Dr. Dr. Uh, Jacobs, that we don't know how she does it. How is she doing it? She's always calm, she's always laughing. Like in the department, it's only me and her who laughs like that. <laughs> so it's only me and her who, I, I've, I've even adapted to her way of doing things because she is so pure when she does things. So I'm trying to be pure because um, to me it's a journey as well. Please understand that. To me it's a journey, I'm trying to understand my own journey as well. I'm trying to understand myself I'm trying to understand what is God is actually saying in my life because I believe that um, he's trying to reveal a lot of things in my life through people. That's what he's doing. Mom Sundesi, she also find me in the office. I think uh, maybe they told you that Cindy is crying in the office. Did they tell you? No. She sensed it then. I was in my office crying and then um, I d I've never discussed this with her. But then when she came, I just cried. Not for the first time, I've been crying on her. She's been a shoulder to cry on and she never asked any questions. She just says it's okay and she prays for you. And then you, you actually feel warm in her hands because she has that motherly uh, hands. She has that godly hand. I would so put it like that. So um, I would be very happy if we also get uh, the code books 
the code book where we only have the codes. Where, wherever I feel down, I just go to the book and actually open whichever. It's like the it's like the Bible. Whenever you feel down, you just go to the Bible and say, God, just please direct me to the message that I have to read on this Bible. And then you just slide it in. And then you just get to that. So I would also appreciate if Mom and Daisy can actually give us a book with only codes where because that's where I actually found found strength on this book. I'm gonna actually touch a few of them, okay? Um, I'm not gonna tell you the page because most of you don't have uh, the book, but I'll, I'll, for those who have, it's page 20. And then there's, um, there's one highlighted uh, section there. It says, in the presence of the word, I won't mind the details of life because the word will always take me to my destiny. The word will always take me to my destiny. I don't know where my destiny is because my own destiny is not God's destiny. And he, she also mentions that um, the way we live our lives, we live our lives because we see that, oh, she has a PhD. I want a PhD as well. But then is that your journey? So we actually be, be, become distracted on our own journey by seeing what people have. Oh, she's rich, she's having a Rolex watch. I also want a Rolex watch. But then that's not part of you, that's not who you want. That's not who you are, I mean. You, what, what, what you actually want, you have to actually remain in your presence. That's what Pastor said. She, she, she said you have to actually remain where you have actually asked for your uh, a blessing to come. So when the blessing comes, and then you're not there, then you won't get it. And then you start to question God and say, God, why are you doing this? And then Dr. Sondes, he says, you must never question God. You must never question him because he is the, he is your life. We are, we are living through him, but he is the one who actually knows what and when is going to happen in your life. I want to also, um, my sister here has also touched most of the things. Uh, that I wanted to talk about. And then there's also this other course. I'm, I'm all about the course and also the, um, I don't know what, what word to use to actually say this. But then 56, yes. And then she says we are killed and weighed down by our expectations. That's what I was saying. We are, killed and, we are killed and weighed down by our expectations and expectations of how and when things should happen. Um, she would tell you, she said I was having demons at that time. <laughs> so um, what killed me that day, I'm, I'm going back to what she says here, that we are killed and weighed down by our expectations and the, per and, and the perceptions of how and when things should be done. Um, in, in this field of research, some of you will look at it in life because we live in a community, right? So whereby um, we actually compare ourselves with the neighbor. Uh, this neighbor's kids, they have the PhDs, they, they drive nice cars, they do this and that. In my, in my case, I was comparing myself with my fellow colleagues, uh, saying that I'm spending my second year and I don't know where I stand with my masters. And then this when this demon started attacking me, speaking to speaking devil, devil minds into my head, and then saying that you are not worthy, you won't finish this. And then if you do, if you do leave now, go back home. And then when you go back home, what, I was I was like, what would I be when I go back home? And what would my parents think of me that I actually spent so much time trying to figure something out of my life, of which I thought it was God's purpose. And then I thought that in God's purpose. I'm supposed to finish this thing in even two years, but it took me three years. And during that journey, I had to go through depression, of which is something that was very new to him. I started actually, I was like, I can't feel the pain because there's a lot of things going in my head. So I was like, there was this night whereby I took a blade, I started slashing myself. I was slashing myself, and then I never understood why until Mom Daisy explained to me that Cindy, it's okay. These, these things, as she was saying, whenever you try to actually become something, something very big, they come and attack you because devil is always on your tiptoes. He's always on his tiptoes coming next to you whenever you try to transform to a different person. So um, there's just so much in the book. I'm not sure if we should actually say everything, but then maybe we should not because we won't get bias. So, <laughs> so in order to get bias, I'll just... <laughs> Um, there's one part that I actually like that I want us to I want to share with you guys. Um, so 
this this came back again to me when I was reading this book because depression, to be honest, is something that comes and goes. It comes and goes. It needs you to have people who are very supportive and who understand what you go through in your life and how to support you as well. Um, it's ch it chapter six. It says, um, all I know is that I need to get out of there immediately and fast. There are situations whereby we just sit there and say, we're hoping things will change. We're hoping God will actually come and speak to us. Sometimes that one word will come to you and say, leave. But you will actually say, no, it's not God's word. It's just, it's just one of those bad and good words in our head saying that leave. But then the moment when you actually hear the word says all, or, I mean, uh, it says that um, leave and get out of there immediately. That's when we actually have to take actions. I've learned to actually take actions whenever I feel that there's some word that is actually talking, talking to me and I feel like it makes sense. So to those who haven't bought the book yet, we have bought the book. And, <laughs> and, and, and when she gave me the book after buying it, she was like, oh, take the book then, it's fine. I'm like, no, ma'am, please sign the book and write my name on it. <laughs> so I have my own book. Uh, it has my name. So probably today, everyone, I, I, I would assume, will live with their own book signed with their name as well by our very beloved uh, Dr. Sondezi. As she always says, um, have a blessed day, have a blessed um, um, session. Um, God loves you. I know he loves me because I've been saved through him. I've been saved by God through her. So um, I hope all goes well. And I hope we also support her uh, on, on, on her next upcoming uh, calls or books that she will be um, um, releasing the story. Thank you so much. You so well. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Okay, so the two ladies have, have shared um, for us what they've experienced from the book, what they've gotten from the book, and what we can also expect from it. So I'd like to ask from the floor, if anyone maybe has a question they would like to ask them, since they have went through the whole book, just anything you'd like to ask based on what they've said, or what you'd want to know um, from the book. Um, I'd like to ask... What is one word you would use to describe the book? And why? <laughs> <laughs> so one word I would use to describe the book for me is hope. I think I did explain why, because during the before I read the book I was in despair and I was dwelling too much on my future, thinking too much about my future and that's why I say when I read the book, I fell into worship because, as I said, there was a light of hope that was shone unto me from reading the book. Should I say something at all? <laughs> but we are one. <laughs> um, to me, <coughs> the word golden, that's the word for, for me, it's golden because when I read this book, I'm, 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 I'm not reading it. I feel like she's talking to me. And then I, I feel like she's actually trying to purify me uh, to be that goal that she is. So to me, it speaks gold. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? No? But mine is directed to you. What's your favorite line in the book? <laughs> because it's a signature. To me, that is that is who she is. Whether you are in a conference, whether you're at church, whether it's over a call, whoever you are, like in any dimension, she'll always give you the blessing. So that's that's what I would, I would take from her. And you'll see it in all her books. <laughs> you'll see it in all her books, her album, everything it has to do with her will have that stem. You will not go without a blessing after having encountered her. So that would be it. Thank you, ladies. Um, we're now moving on. Thank you. Guys, this lady has seen it all, ne? <laughs> so I'm about to introduce Ms. Jacobs. Um, Dr. Jacobs, let me say. 
Um, so she's from a colleague, worksite. So she has seen, she has seen a daycare down the aisle. <laughs> And the only reason why I say she's seen a decade is because we were always in the yeah in the labs, we are there in the offices, we are there making noise, it's us. And not even just me and my sister, I'm speaking of all her students. From Abo Cindy to Abo KG to Abo Sandile, it was a lot. That office tended to be like a crash. <laughs> so whenever you knock on her door, it's rare to find her alone. And if you knock on her door, she won't, either she's not there, she's with someone else, or she's with the crowd in, 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 her, in her office. So she's never, she's never alone. An incident, like an example I can make was, um, I have a few friends that we went to UJ with um, first year. So we were there, I went to see my friends, then we came back, and then like, okay, no, just help me. Um, Mama wants us to help her with a few boxes, please come along. It was her first time seeing these people. She's like, oh, my sons, come meet my colleagues. <laughs> she doesn't even know them, but she's introducing them to other people. So that, that's just how welcoming and how much room she has in her heart for every, everyone. So every student knows which, when we're hungry, we go to that office. When we're tired, we go to that office. We need a place to study, we go to that office. We need help with our courses, registration, modules. Whatever it is, supplementaries, you know, Uguti, you always go to an office. And we've even become accustomed to know Uguti. We have many, many siblings, Spanini, <laughs> Spanini, so that different families that we have. And I think um, Dr. Jacobs has seen the up and down that has been happening in that office. <laughs> so I'd just like to ask to give her a warm round of applause as she comes to share her Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It is my honor and great pleasure to be here at the launch of Dr. Sondesi's first book, Reasons for the Long Away. Dr. Sondesi is my colleague, friend, and sister in Christ, and I fondly refer to her as my sisto. <laughs> I first met her in 2007 when she was a young academic that just joined the University of Johannesburg. Although I didn't know her or much about her at the time, I felt an instant connection. We warmed up quickly to each other and our relationship has grown so much over the last 14 years. Bui has been my friend my advisor, my mentor. She was my first mentor in the lab, from whom I learned the, learned the fundamentals of experimental physics. And we have a lot of funny memories about it. She's my loving big sister, my prayer warrior, and my spiritual guide. In the environment I work in, there is nobody else that encompasses all of these together. I admire her boldness, her strength, her beauty, and above all, her relationship with God and how she maintains it consistently in her daily life, regardless of what is going on around her. She finds time for the Lord amidst all the busyness, all the tight schedules, all the deadlines, she quotes this in her book as well, where she says, a fruitful life in the Lord is about a healthy and consistent relationship with him. Her conviction that everything will follow the word of God, provided we obey and surrender ourselves to him, is evident in her daily life. We all know when Bui is in the department because we can hear her loud laughter and she spreads so much joy to all around her. The peace and joy of Christ is always with her. Even in the darkest times of her life, it is this aspect of hers 
that truly amazes me. I always ask her, Sisto, how do you do it? How do you stay so positive in the time of adversity? To which she responds, you, my Sisto, it's Matata. But we push forward in faith. And that is it. There is no other formula or shortcut. It is her faith and trust in God. This is reflected in her book also, where Dr. Sondesi shares her, her perspective on the reasons for the longer way to achieve our goals. She has used her life as an example, the challenges she faced, and has explained it based on the word of God. I can very much relate to this. Let me share a little bit about myself and my academic journey with you. I was brought up in a Catholic home. My parents were both science teachers, predominantly in Africa, first in Ethiopia, then Nigeria, and finally South Africa, before they retired and moved back to India. I was told from a very young age that studying is important, getting good marks is important, education is important, and knowledge is very important. My mother told me that knowledge is power. Knowledge and education will give me control over my life, she said. With knowledge, I can lead an independent life, I was told. According to my mother, an educated person would never experience poverty. And last, but definitely not the least, a good education was necessary to get a good marriage alliance from a good family. As you probably know, most Indians still have arranged marriages back in India. Somehow everything good was associated with knowledge and a high education. This, of course, got em embedded in my mind as a young child. I took this advice very seriously, maybe a bit too seriously, because I found myself waking up at 4 a.m. to study for a class test in Standard 4. <laughs> Life got even more tough in secondary and high school. It was the time of apartheid, and the multiracial school I attended was in Mabatu, meaning I had to move to boarding school. It was tough. And just when I adjusted to life in boarding school, it was time to be uprooted again. It was the end of apartheid. Change and fear of the unknown led my parents to believe that it's best that I move back to India for my tertiary education. Although I moved back to my own country, the culture shock was massive. I was not used to that highly competitive lifestyle. I had to shape up and pull myself together very quickly and start preparing for my next academic battle of becoming a doctor. You see, back then in India, only doctors and engineers had a high status in society. And it was every parent's dream, every Indian parent's dream, to ensure that their children became one or the other, either by getting through the very difficult entrance examination or by paying a huge amount of money to guarantee a seat in one of the prestigious institutions. I knew that was not an option for me because I knew my parents had limited resources. Being a people person, I knew that helping people is what I would enjoy. So I chose the doctor path. Time came for the very competitive entrance examination and the results were a disaster. I was nowhere near eligible for admission. My brother, who was already a doctor, and my parents told me to set aside a whole year to prepare for this competitive entrance examination and try again. I did just that because at that time, 
That's what I really wanted. I tried again. This time, I had improved remarkably, but still not good enough to get into medicine, but veterinary instead. I wasn't sure how I'd be around animals, so I decided, no, it's not for me. My parents were disappointed. I was disappointed. I could not understand why, despite all my hard work and dedication, I did not get into the path I wanted. God was redirecting me into a new path, the path of physics. I loved physics because of my passionate high school teacher who made it interesting. So I decided to pursue it. Nobody understood my choice. Physics? What are you going to do with physics? They asked. I smiled and responded, watch the space, because to be honest, I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> and so began my journey into physics. When I was completing my master's degree in physics, one fine day, my father told me to expect an email from a man called Ashley Jacobs. Ashley was an engineer in South Africa who had completed his master's in computer science and started working for an IT company. He was looking for a girl who had a master's in science, was no shorter than five foot four, and was Catholic. Guess what? I ticked all the boxes. <laughs> and that little green ID book, which I thought I would never use again after leaving this country, came, suddenly became very useful. Over the next year, I got to know Ashley. And by the end of the year, we were married and came back to South Africa for the next leg of my journey. Six months after I got to South Africa, I was offered a job and started working at UJ as a lecturer in the physics department. As a lecturer in physics, a new doorway appeared that would allow me to pursue my doctoral studies. I enthusiastically began a PhD, but my journey was short-lived. I had hit a roadblock and my research could not proceed. The Lord had yet another path for me to reach my destination. I started a new project in a new group. The, this, this new journey was the toughest one yet. I was required to learn and show quick progress, adhere to strict and sometimes unrealistic deadlines, stay focused, provide solutions, endure humiliation, rise to expectations, all while juggling a full-time teaching job and family life with a small child. It was painful. It was exhausting. It was overwhelming. There were a lot of tears, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of pep talk from women peers who had traveled their PhD path before me, such as Bui. And through all this, I found myself growing closer to the Lord and his word. I found strength in the Lord, and I managed to continue my journey, which was taking longer than expected because of issues beyond my control. However, as I persevered, the Lord rewarded me. I was recognized for my presentations. I got to travel overseas with my family. I got to do research in South America and Australia, none of which I ever imagined doing when I started with my PhD. Throughout this journey, my husband stood by my side. His willingness to stand by me, encourage me and support me to the end showed me how much he loved me and strengthened my relationship with him. My son and I also bonded on our many trips to the lab to check on experiments and our return trips past McDonald's. <laughs> 
When I would give everything I had and be asked to give even more, I would surrender everything to the Lord and He always came through for me. When I look at some of the work in my thesis, I know it was not me who wrote it. After a very long six and a half year journey that tested my character, stretched my capabilities, and above all, humbled me, I reached my destination in 2019. Standing at this point of my life, and looking back, I can see how the Lord intervened at every step of my life. How he guided my decisions and my actions. Every detour to the path that I had chosen led me to a better choice for me. The Lord gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. I wanted to be a doctor, but I needed to be a physicist in order to marry my soulmate. I wanted to stay in South Africa, but needed to go to India to become independent and strong for the journey ahead. I wanted to finish my PhD in three years, but I needed to finish it in six and a half years to strengthen my character and my faith. He held me in the palm of his hand at every phase of my life. I am ashamed to say that I never read the word of God seriously until I started my PhD. And I am guessing if my PhD ride was easy, I probably still would not be reading his word or meditating on his promises. As Dr. Sondesi says in her book, our God is jealous and fights for what belongs to him. God does whatever it takes to bring his people back. The length of our journey depends on the time we take to detach from our old ways and learn about him. Learn to lean on him throughout and you will experience his boundless love and mercy. Despite our failures and shortcomings, his grace makes him continue to what he does for us. Continue to do what he does for us. This is my story. And I am sure all of you here have similar stories. I would like to conclude by sharing some valuable messages, valuable messages from Dr. Sondesi's book. We have to trust God with our journey. We are certainly going to face delays and defeat if we are double-minded. We should just make up our mind and proceed in faith. We have not been promised an easy life, but he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Choosing Jesus does not automatically assure us of an easy path. We will still have to bear a cross, but Jesus will be by our side to help us. We have to align with the word of God and we have to transform. I was told from a very young age that studying is important, getting good marks is important, education is important, and knowledge is very important. My mother told me that knowledge is power. Knowledge and education will give me control over my life, she said. With knowledge, I can lead an independent life. I was told. According to my mother, an educated person would never experience poverty. And last, but definitely not the least, as you probably know, most Indians still have arranged marriages back in India. Somehow everything good was associated with knowledge and a high education. This of course got em embedded in my mind as a young child. I took this advice very seriously, maybe a bit too seriously, because I found myself waking up at 4 a.m. to study for a class test 
in standard form. Life got even more tough in secondary and high school. It was the time of apartheid, and the multiracial school I attended was in Mabatu, meaning I had to move to boarding school. It was tough. And just when I adjusted to life in boarding school, it was time to be uprooted again. It was the end of apartheid. Change and fear of the unknown led my parents to believe that it's best that I move back to India for my tertiary education. Although I moved back to my own country, the culture shock by getting through the very difficult entrance examination or by paying a huge amount of money to guarantee a seat in one of the prestigious institutions. But that's what I really wanted. I tried again. This time, I had improved remarkably, but still not good enough to get into medicine, but veterinary instead. I wasn't sure how I'd be around animals, so I decided, no, it's not. God was redirecting me into a new path, the path of physics. I loved physics because of my passionate high school teacher who made it interesting. So I decided to pursue it. Nobody understood my choice. Physics? What are you going to do with physics? They asked. I smiled and responded, watch this space, because to be honest, I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so began my journey to physics. When I was completing my master's degree in physics, one fine day, my father told me to expect an email from a man called Ashley Jacobs. Ashley was an engineer in South Africa who had completed his master's in computer science and started working for an IT company. He was looking for a girl who had a master's in science, was no shorter than five foot four, and was Catholic. Guess what? I ticked all the boxes. <laughs> and that little green ID book, which I thought I would never use again after leaving this country, came, suddenly became very useful. Over the next year, I got to know Ashley, and by the end of the year, we were married and came back to South Africa for the next leg of my journey. Six months after I got to South Africa, I was offered a job and started working at UJ as a lecturer in the physics department. As a lecturer in my doctoral studies, I enthusiastically began a PhD, but my journey was short-lived. I had hit a roadblock, and my research could not proceed. The Lord had yet another path for me, filling a full-time teaching job and family life with a small child. It was painful. It was exhausting. It was overwhelming. There were a lot of tears, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of pep talk from women peers who had traveled their PhD path before me, such as Bui. Encourage me and support me to the end. Show me how much you love me and strengthened my relationship with him. My son and I also bonded on our many trips to the lab to check on experiments and our return trips past McDonald's. When I would give everything I had and be asked to give even more, I would surrender everything to the Lord and he always came through for me. When I look at some of the work in my pieces, I know it was not me who wrote it. After a very long six and a half year journey that tested my character, stretched my capabilities, and above all, humbled me, I reached my destination in 2019. Standing at this point of my life, and looking back, I can see how the Lord intervened 
at every I wanted to stay in South Africa, but needed to go to India to become independent and strong for the journey ahead. I wanted to finish my PhD in three years, but I needed to finish it in six and a half years to strengthen my character and my faith. He held me in the palm of his hand at every phase of my life. I am ashamed to say that I never read the Word of God seriously until I started my PhD. And I am guessing, if my PhD ride was easy, I probably still would not be reading his word or meditating on his promises. As Dr. Sondesi says in her book, and fights for what belongs to him, God does whatever it takes to bring his people back. Why our journey happened, another way, the other way, the longer way. Dr. Sondesi, I would like to congratulate you on this achievement of yours. You are a true woman of God and this reflects in your daily life and you have captured this in your book also. I thoroughly enjoyed reading this. May this be the first of many more meaningful contributions. I wish you the very best. Thank you. I think it's open. I don't think you have much reference, like a PhD, you're writing it from, there's no, there's no other like what you are doing. I don't know if that makes sense. So if you go through tough times and you go through the longer way, and then you must still go through the process of realizing that I'm supposed to go through the long way. And then you must still come to the point of sort of accepting, acknowledging, and then finding solutions for it. Not necessarily solutions, but comforting yourself within that long way. I think it, ta it takes a lot. Because we might all go through the longer way, but can we all sort of have the strength to pick yourself up and then pick someone else up while you're going through your longer way?